Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name's Frank and I have allergies. Um, I'm congested right now, so there's gonna be a lot of little cuts. There might be a couple sniffles. I apologize. Um, I have a little bit of a pollen allergy. I'm fighting it, but I'm excited because I really want to make this video. And I'm at a weird angle here because I don't want the camera too close to the printers or you won't be able to hear me. So I'm doing my best to project over them and I just wanted to get this video out there. Uh, if you're watching this, it's for a couple different reasons. Um, you searched how to build an Iron Man suit, how to build a cosplay suit, how to build a uh, Star Boost Mark IV 39, a couple different reasons why I brought you here. So with that, I this is the first official video of my Mark 39 Star Boost slash Gemini cosplay build. This is my Mark 85 cosplay build that you can see in a whole other series of videos that I've documented. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably a little confused or wondering, well, you're not done with the Mark 85, and you're right, I'm not. I'm still buttoning things up. I just printed a whole new kind of crotch cod piece area. I'm printing a new helmet. There's still a lot of little bits and bobs and things to do on this suit, but that's for the Mark 85 update videos. So stay tuned for update video eight. This isn't done and I'm not neglecting this by any means, but while I finish the little things here and there, I can start printing Star Boost. I've been wanting to make this suit for a very long time. When I was actually building the Mark 85, there was a stage where it was all primer white and it looked awesome. It, uh, on the stand, it just looked like such a cool suit. Um, you can see here that it just, it was an imposing kind of, you know, muscular looking suit that I just, I absolutely fell in love with. And I had a hard time going through and then deciding, hey, I, I wanna paint that. It would've been really cool to leave a, like a golden white Mark 85, but this is the suit I wanted. So I finished this up. Then DO3D announced that they were going to be remaking the Mark uh, 39 files. I gotta get out of that habit. I, I'm gonna probably confuse Mark 85 and Mark 39, and I apologize. I'll try to catch myself. But they announced that they were going to be updating their old files. Now their original Mark 39 files were low poly files, older 3D model files that just um, kind of low res. You could see it really wasn't smooth. There was more angles. Um, they, were, they, were, they were old. It was kind of in the infancy of doing big cosplay suits like this, 3D printed. So the technology was still emerging. 3D designers and modelers were still trying to find their kind of, you know, um, own little corner of this. With some popularity and the success of some of their other suits and their newer updated suits like the Mark 50, the Mark 85, the Mark uh, 49 Rescue, they decided to update the Mark 39. And on top of that, after a contest was held on their website, everybody gets the Mark 39 files updated for free. And between that, wanting to make another suit, loving the Mark 39, I decided it's time to pull the trigger on this build. They just released the files. I already got my hands on the, the upper body of the files and we're gonna be kind of going over them and looking at them and exploring some things that might actually help you guys slice and build and cut and arrange and kind of do everything you're gonna need to, need to do to make this project. When I started this project, I was brand new to this. I was ambitious, I had one 3D printer, my blue CR-10S, and I just wanted to build the suit. That was back in October. I have learned so unbelievably much in this, this, these couple months building this, that this next build is gonna go so much better and smoother. Not saying that I'm not proud of this thing, but there's definitely mistakes that I made that I, you know, I've documented the best I can. And with this Mark 39 build, I want to try to do even better this time on showing you guys step by step how I'm arranging parts, how I'm cutting them, why I did something this way, why I did something that way. Um, I'm also going to be covering different types of printers you might want to use for this. Do you want to do this on a smaller Ender 3? Do you want to go and spend a thousand dollars on a CR10 Max? What's the best kind of options for print size? What can you do? And as it evolves, as we start to print things and get physical parts in our hands, you know, how do we attach them? Electronics are going to be using. This build also will be a little bit different than my Mark 85, where this is a completely 100% analog suit. There are no Arduinos, no programming, no microcontrollers. Everything in here is DC systems and circuits and simple voltages. For the Mark 39 though, I'm going to finally dive into programming and coding and Arduinos to give it a little bit more functionality. There's a lot more lights around the suit. There's boosters, there's, there's just some cool features on the suit that I think can be emulated by actually moving into the programming side of things. And I'm, I've never done that stuff before, so we're gonna learn together and hopefully I can try to, you know, help you guys through that process. So really, the order and focus I'm gonna be taking on this build is we're gonna first 
kind of look at what you're going to need to do this. What kind of 3D printers are, should you look for size-wise, build-wise? What kind of programs are you going to be using? What, what's to be expected for the build? Because trust me, I know what to be expected now. Once, every, once we start getting things printed and physically in our hands, how we're going to sand them, I'm going to actually take you guys a lot more in depth with the painting process that I use because it's going to be very similar to this, obviously just a little more uh, white and a little less red. Fitting the suit. That has to be one of the biggest regrets I have when making the Mark 85. I rushed. I had all the parts printed, I thought everything fit real nice, and I went right into the paint stage. And it is my biggest regret because I still have fitment issues. I still have things that don't close and seal right and I'm, I'm struggling to finish that but now since the suit is painted I have to be even more careful and because I, I don't want to scratch everything so we're gonna spend a lot more time in that fitting stages and since the mark 39 isn't a nanotech skin suit it's more of, it is an armor suit the joints and the movement are gonna be a little bit different so I'm actually excited to explore some of the ways and techniques that I can actually uh, you know build this and put this thing together if you guys go and watch my first mark 85 becoming Iron Man video, you can tell the production quality is a little low. I was using an old GoPro Hero 3. I had just really started out, you know, trying to make this tutorial and I really didn't know much about 3D printing at the time. I've come a long way. I'm confident in this and I'm just, I'm so excited to start this. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put the second suit, but that's a kind of, that's a bridge will cost when we get there. If you're wondering why all four of my 3D printers are going right now, I've actually started printing some of the files out. Um, I got the helmet a few days ago, I finally pulled the trigger on it, and the biggest thing that was holding me back from starting this project, and it could not have arrived at a better time, it arrived the day the files were released, was getting my hands on filament. Trying to get enough filament for this, and to save up and sell things, and just bank enough money to actually get enough product to build a whole suit, is a little bit of a, a daunting task, even if we weren't in the times we are in. So while in the planning stages of the suit, a pretty cool thing happened. I was pretty proud of this suit. Apparently you guys like it too. I love it. I love how it looks. I love how it all came out. I needed filament and I decided to try out Monoprice. It was a, a little bit of a cheaper brand of PLA Plus on Amazon. I got a spool of it, I tried it, and it came out so smooth, I, 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 I wanted more of it. Um, uh, I, this suit was made in 100% Sunlu PLA Plus. Unfortunately, at this time, and I really hope it changes, Sunlu is discontinuing their PLA Plus line and moving into other types of filaments. I really wanted to use PLA Plus. I don't feel like dealing with PETG. And we're gonna talk about filaments in probably another video and just your best mediums for printing. So I really like Monoprice, and I decided, since I'm gonna be buying about 15 rolls of the stuff, because that's what I kind of estimated, I used about 14, 15 rolls on this. There were some mistakes, there was some waste. Even though the Star Boost is a little bit bigger, I think I can probably get away with about 15 rolls. So I figured let's start there. I emailed them and I asked, hey, I'm about, this is one of my old projects. I think I did pretty good on it. Take a look at it. Here's some of my social media. I was wondering if I did a bulk buy of 15 rolls, would you guys offer me any type of discount? Would you, you know, 10%? Something to just help save, you know, some money. Why not? They hit me back with, how about we just send you 15 rolls for free? What the hell? Um, this whole thing has just turned into this ridiculous, amazing I don't even know. I don't, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> if you're still watching this, if you're you know if you're if you're not new to the channel, if you've been helping me out with all this, thank you. I I just I cannot say it enough, guys. This has been incredible. I get to make the nerdy crap that I want to make, and I can teach you guys how. I don't have to focus and spend as much time making stuff to sell to pull money back in to put into this. They sent me 15 free rolls of PLA Plus. And the only stipulation was they want a good review. So you're going to see a review video of the PLA itself, not so much related to Iron Man, but an actual review video for the quality issues I've had. And I've had a little bit of issues with it. It's not perfect. So if you know, you're know you hesitant about buying it, wait for my review video. I do have some things to say, but I didn't sign anything. There's no contract here. It, it, this isn't like some go buy model price. You might have tried this stuff. And you might hate it. That's fine. Um, I started printing with it. I'm happy with it so far once I got over some pitfalls of it. This whole Starboost Mark 39 is, is primarily gonna be Monoprice PLA Plus. They sent me 15 rolls of gray, and so far, it's printing pretty smooth, and I'm excited to get some pieces off, and then, you know, we'll start seeing that throughout the video. So, Monoprice, thank you so much. This is like, this is awesome. This is like one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. So, as I'm going through this video, as I'm filming it in action, I'm realizing that there's a lot to talk about in just the preparation stages. So what I think I'm gonna do is, 
I'll show you guys some pictures of the suit at the end. We'll talk about those, but then I think in the next update video, when I really start slicing parts, I'll show you guys some more orientation and that will kind of be the next update video because I just don't want this to be too long. I want this to just be a, you know, a start, an intro. These are my plans. And in the next couple videos, we'll start to talk about actually getting started and getting set up. What do you need to get started? What do you need? What type of skills do you need to have under your belt to start a journey like this? First, if you're going the 3D printed route, which you don't have to, you could do an EVA foam build. You could do a paper craft foam build. But for my series of videos, we're gonna be focusing on 3D printing. You should have some 3D printing under your belt. I started 3D printing in July, 2019. I did a lot of test prints. I had a little couple prints underneath my belt. I started to get pretty good quality and I jumped right in. I don't necessarily recommend that. Though I started 3D printing pretty recently, I had a lot of other little skill sets that really helped me with this. I already knew how to paint. I already knew how to do really nice you know, paint jobs on plastic. I've been working on cars for years. I already had a very good familiarity with electronic systems. And I, you know, I had a lot of other little skills that really helped this come together. If you're diving into this and you're like, man, I really want to make the Star Boost, the files are free. You can get those. You don't need to save up for those. Get a 3D printer. Learn. I have videos on my channel, how to start 3D printing, what's to be expected, and that's a whole continuing ongoing series. And hopefully by the time you're watching this, those are more advanced and it'll actually help you start printing and getting really good quality prints. Don't buy a 3D printer having no experience in this and jump right in and try to get something like this. I, I just, I, it's not saying you can't do it, but I really, really wouldn't advise it. Get a little Ender 3. They're about $200 right now and it's a perfect little 3D printer. I have one chugging away over in the corner right there. And even if down the line you go and upgrade and you start on the Ender 3 and you realize, hey, I really feel confident in my abilities. I wanna start making a suit, upgrade. Buy a CR-10S, they're coming down in price. Get a CR-10S Pro or V2. Maybe you can get your hands on an S4. It's a, it's a pretty good big printer, but you're not gonna get rid of that Ender 3. I still have my Ender 3 over there printing the faceplate for Starboost because it sits on it. And it's a very good quality printer for smaller detailed stuff. So even as, as you expand your arsenal of printers, you're not gonna get rid of it. It's an investment into that hobby. I started with one CR-10S. I eventually got a second one to help speed up the print. Now I have four printers here. I have a fifth one on the way, an Ender 5 Plus. Thank you again for DO3D for actually sponsoring that contest where I won that Ender 5 Plus and I cannot wait to get that thing. Now again, this isn't saying you can't do this on a smaller printer like an, an A8 or an Ender 3. I just wouldn't advise it. The build surface is very small and while you can fit and cut most of these parts up, you'll be limiting yourself a little bit in quality and you're gonna increase how many prints you have to do so, so much. So I would use the Ender 3 get comfortable with it, but if you're really, really, really just gun-ho, I want to make this. Look for a Creality CR-10S, an Artillery Sidewinder X1, something with a build volume around 300 by 400. That's gonna give you a lot of good parts. I was able to print most of the suit, this suit on my CR-10S without having to cut up too much. And we're gonna talk about what you should cut and versus what you shouldn't. Just because you can print something really big doesn't always mean you should. And again, that's a video for later, and we'll talk more about that. So you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a 3D printer. You're gonna to wanna to be comfortable in your skills. And then, since the files are free, you can start printing little things. Print the helmet. Hey, the helmet came out nice. You know what? Let me print a hand. Cause you know, an Iron Man gauntlet hand would be pretty neat, wouldn't it? You start building your skill set up. Finish a print, paint it, sand it, do all that. See what goes into it and practice. The more practice you get in before you tackle something like this, the better. It will only help you in the final run. Now in this series, I'm gonna be going a little bit more into depth unlike I did with this, into how I actually sanded the prints, how I painted them, my whole entire process for this to help you guys out if you are starting out. Now again, this is my way of doing it, it is not the way of doing it. So go watch other tutorials. There's so much information out there about finishing prints and finishing 3D printed parts and cosplay and painting. Just the information's out there, you guys just have to find it. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, yes, this is something I wanna continue on with, I wanna try to build that, get the printer, start learning. It's the, it's the best course of action. And I really hope that through this whole series, I can really give you guys a very good idea of just what this whole project's going to entail because this Mark 39 is just, it's beautiful. I am so excited for this thing. So let's hop on real quick onto the computer and take a little bit better look at the files. We're not really gonna do any slicing and arranging, but I wanna give you guys an overview of what the file set looks like as of now and then and then we'll kind of see what we're dealing with here all right guys well here it is this is the star boost file now it does come with the other arm it does come with the other um hip 
you know, hit pod here. I just didn't render them in, in this uh, preview because there's no point to, because you can mirror them. Um, also, my computer, it's good, it's not the best. Uh, so I just want it, to, it'll make it move faster and it won't be as choppy and laggy. I also don't think I added the lower back. So these files look absolutely great. My computer doesn't have any trouble handling them or rendering them. But if you look at it, and you'll notice this actually doesn't have the texture of the actual Starboost suit, the, uh, the hexagon patterns. And what's cool is DO3D actually included a whole set of armor with and without texture. So I can load in Acura the model with texture. And you can see right here, this is the actual ad plate with the hexagon pattern on it. And they give you options to print with the hexagons or without. In case you want to try to do the pattern by yourself, maybe with like a vinyl stencil or, uh, you know, putting on maybe like rubber matting or something. I'm still trying to toss around which method I want to go with um, because I've already sliced a couple parts and the, the print time for the patterns and the parts with the hexagon pattern on are a lot longer. They're going to take longer to print and unless you're doing a pretty good quality and your printer's dialed in well, um, the quality might suffer a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna play around with that, and we're gonna I'm gonna mess around with options there. Um, I'm printing the helmet with the hexagon pattern. They didn't offer the option without. They are adding that, but we're gonna see what that looks like. I also kind of already went and scaled this in accordance with my Mark 85 build. So I'm probably gonna do the same thing I did with my last suit. And Do3D is pretty good at keeping their proportions together. So what I mean by that is. You're not going to drop in the chest and then suddenly the abs are bigger than the chest. You know, the, the files are going to come loaded and they're going to already be proportional to each other. That's how I printed my Mark 85. I just printed everything at 100% scale and made it fit together and I kind of fit inside of it. I'm probably going to print everything the same way with this to keep, keep the proportions as close and tight as possible to what the suit looks like, is supposed to look like. This way I will end up with some like weird bobblehead effect or things aren't scaled wrong. Um, that's probably the route I'm going to go, but that's probably, again, going to be for a future video. You can see the ab section here, and this is all one piece. You have your hip pod, kind of deflector uh, cover on the side. The chest is one whole big piece that actually kind of wraps underneath the backpack, and it wraps underneath here, and then there's actually no back for the suit. The back is the backpack, so there's not going to be an option to take the backpack off or anything. It's going to be part of the suit itself. Um, I might see if I can talk to DO3D and see if maybe they'll add one. I don't know if that'd be an option people would want, but being able to put the backpack on and off might kind of give it a pretty unique look of just a whole different type of star boost. The backpack is one giant solid piece though, and my CR10 Max is big, but I'm still not going to be able to print that thing in one shot. So we're going to cut that up and have to get creative with it because there's a lot of channels and holes in it that you know supports are, aren't going to really like. The neck is actually pretty big and long. Um, it's all one piece. We're going to have to probably put that in some type of flexible material. It's a lot more robust than the neck on my Mark 85. So we're really going to have to uh, get creative with that. They did the same thing that they did with the Mark 85 and they cut out the arc reactor on the chest. This way you can print it separately. You can resin print it to make it a little clear. You can resin cast it. You can do a multitude of things to actually put an arc reactor in there. So real quick, I want to touch on one thing. I'm using a program called Slicer, and it's a program just like Cura or Prussia Slicer or Creality Slicer or Simplify 3D, but it's bad. <laughs> I don't mean anything against the program itself. Support isn't really there. It's a free program. It doesn't get many updates. As far as a slicer goes and making G-code, it's not the best. However, it has a couple cool features that we're going to use throughout this build that you've probably seen me use in some of my other videos, like the cut feature for making straight plane cuts, and we're going to go through that in another video. And then the split feature, which actually can break up multi-polygon um, and STL parts into separate parts. Again, another video, but it has a pretty cool little spatial coordinate feature, and it's you're kind of it's kind of I think it's almost like a hack. You're using a program backwards. So what I mean by that is, if I start dropping parts onto the build plate, the program's going to want to auto arrange them to fit the build plate, and it's going to put them next to each other. Now, looking at this. You can probably figure out how they fit together, but say you want to get a good image of what the arm, the entire arm is going to look like. You can actually do something kind of crafty, delete all, and you go up to preferences, 
and in preferences you'll see auto center parts XY and auto align parts Z turn that off and what that's gonna do is when you drop a part in it's gonna position it however it didn't position it on the bed this time depending on how, how, what program was used to make the file and the way the STL was exported it might have like spatial coordinates saved into the file where it was actually saved in reference to the zero point on the build plate so this, el uh, this elbow cover kind of popped up into space. Now let's drop another part in. It drops it right into where the 3D model was made. And you can actually use this feature to completely build up an arm or an entire suit. So this is how I built the model we were messing with earlier. I turned off the XY coordinates, dropped everything in it, and it actually rebuilt the whole model. And then I saved that all as one STL, and now I have the whole 3D model to look at and I don't have to go in and drop the parts in each and every time. So right now, if I wanted to, I could go and export this STL, just the whole arm, and save it as one whole piece. And then it gives you a better way to kind of see how things line up and fit. Like I was saying before, the elbow is actually a pretty unique design where you have this whole inner cover that if you put it in flexible material, the this little um, circle piece can kind of rotate around it. And I, I want to get creative with some hinges on this to make one whole solid arm that I can slip my arm into, and then it you know flexes out a joint. So there's a lot to be had with this suit, and it's going to be really fun to build. The detail on it's beautiful. Do3D also released two different helmet files. Now they don't have them in the uh, file set that you download for the upper body. Uh, again, I'm going to message them to see if they'll add it and keep both in there. They're also working on a helmet file that has no texture in it, just like the rest of the suit. So they include, a, you can get a helmet file that's all one piece because the Star Boost is a space flight suit. It's not supposed to have a lifting face mask where the whole mask lifts up and comes back. It's, it's spent for space. It's not supposed to do that. But they did cut out a version of the suit that does have the lifting face plate. This way you can actually do the classic Iron Man thing. So you have two options. Be careful though, because this is, I dropped both helmets in and didn't touch them. The removable faceplate one is scaled up a little bit more, so just keep that in mind if you go to scale it to your suit, it's going to be a little bit bigger. But regardless, both helmets look great, and whichever route you want to take, they're going to look absolutely wonderful. I myself am printing the helmet right now with the removable faceplate because I do want to be able to breathe if I'm walking around in the Comic Con or something. I'm going to want to actually like be able to take a breath. So there's going to be seams, but I'm going to try to get them as nice and you know closed off as possible. Realistically, the only spots you should ever see a seam are going to be here next to the Widow's Peak. Everything else actually follows the pretty natural line of the mask, so it really won't look too bad. Can I also say I hate how I sound right now? I know I sound congested and stuffy, and I absolutely hate allergies. But yes, I'm taking allergy medicine. This is me on medicine. So I think that actually kind of does it for this little um, preview of the files. Again, we're going to go way more into the files throughout the build series, how I'm arranging things, what am I cutting, what am I not cutting. I'll show you a lot more features in Slicer and Cura and how to arrange things and get good you know, supports and infill density. We're going to go over all that, I promise. So stay tuned for that and let's move on. So guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and you know joining me on this next journey, this next suit that I'm just, again, ecstatic to start uh, i i wish these would print faster um thank you so much for everything you guys have helped me with the support the love everything sharing my stuff giving me feedback it's really helped me grow and just embrace this whole hobby of prop building and 3d printing and cosplay just i love it i i can't get enough of this stuff so thank you very very much if you guys haven't already i think you have another drill Please subscribe, this way you can stay up to date with all these kind of videos that I'm putting out, cosplay tutorials, and I still have so much to teach you about this alone that I, I promise I'm not gonna run out of content anytime soon. Uh, it just would really help me, it would help the channel grow, and it really, I just wanna reach more people with this. I wanna teach everybody how to 3D print. You don't even need to be into cosplay or Marvel or geeky stuff. It's just, a, it's a cool hobby you can do at home, and if you've been on my channel, you know how much I love it, and it's awesome. As this continues to grow, I'm gonna be doing more giveaways, I'm gonna be doing a lot more contests and prizes and just trying to, you know, give back to you guys because this means nothing without you. If no one watches and I can't teach anybody, there's no point in me sharing this. So you guys are the support I need to keep this going. So I wanna give back to you guys. Thank you so much for everything. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, drop a comment, message me on Instagram. It's the best way to talk to me by far. Uh, I try to respond to everybody and if I'm slow, I'm sorry. But also at the same time, starting here, please be patient. If I haven't put out a tutorial for this, how the faceplates motorized, how the electronics are done, 
give me time. I still have a full-time job aside from this as a hobby and you know, making videos is a little bit difficult. So it takes a little bit of time. I promise I'm trying to teach you guys everything I can. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.